Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Ross. Today's part 42 of my fitness database. And again, it's a database with lots of cool stuff in it. Doesn't matter if you care about fitness or not. Today, we're gonna solve the problem of having duplicate IDs in our combo box because we merged two other tables together. And I'll show you how to fix that. And that's what's covered today. And if you haven't watched parts one through 41, you're missing out on all kinds of cool stuff. Go watch those first, then come on back. And we're back. Did you miss me? I missed you guys. <laughs> all right, so in the last video, we built our union query. So we have our food, items and our meals all in the same query so we can feed the same combo box. Now, the next task is to get this into that combo box. Now, I'm gonna admit, I'm gonna show you the wrong way to do this first because this is a mistake that I see a lot of people make when it comes to union queries. Some of you who have already been through a bunch of union query hell might already recognize what the problem is going to be. I'm not gonna spoil it though. I wanna show you what happens so I can teach you the right way to deal with it. it. You get a better appreciation for it. Some people are like, well, no, just, just get to it and show me the right way. No, I'm gonna show you the mistake first because then you'll appreciate it, okay? All right, now this comes together. This is meal, union, food, queue. Remember that. In fact, I'm gonna put that on my clipboard. I'm gonna right click on this, go to rename and just copy it to my clipboard. That's a trick I do once in a while. Okay, so in the log, now this guy gets its row source from code when the form opens. So we're just gonna get it, take it out of here. This doesn't even have to be here, okay? Um, it's gonna get rewritten when the form loads. So we're gonna go in here and we're gonna find, see just like the filter in the order by that gets rewritten. Uh, this stuff is, is kind of sticky though. It keeps coming back, that's okay. Let's find the onload event bring this over here where it fits. Okay, we don't need you for now. Sorry, just gotta do a little resizing here. Okay, so it's the update food combo row source, this guy. All right, we just need to update this. Let's see, this becomes description, the fields we changed last time. This becomes ID and description from paste, and then we're gonna order by Description. Okay, save it. All right, debug compile. Everything should compile fine. Let's close it, close it, close it. Open her up. And now if we drop this down, oh, there we go. Perfect. And I can see all my fruits, right? There's my fruits and our meals and everything looks great. All right, let's pick a fruit. Pick a fruit, pick a banana. That works fa fabulous. I can add it. Let's pick uh, bear bells, I can add that. Let's pick a meal. Let's, where's a meal in here? Okay, let's pick uh, this one, Rick's Standard Breakfast Meal. Okay, that worked, all right. Let's pick, um, da, 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 da. let's see, let's pick Rick's Coffee. Oh, wait a minute, it went to banana. All right, let's try, wait, man, that's a bug. Let's try that again, let's pick Rick's Coffee again. C-O-F-F, -F. Rick's Coffee, click, banana. Ah. Why is that happening? Pause the video now and see if you could figure out on your own why that's happening. And then I'll tell you the problem in a minute and then what the solution is. Did you figure it out? All right, let's take a look at what's in the union query here. And if we look, you can see the IDs over here. We've got some duplicate IDs. There's a one and a one. There's a banana and coffee. They both have the same ID. What's happening is this combo box, right, is bound to an ID. Whatever's in that, that zero column, that hidden column, right? That's the actual value of that box. So when we pick coffee, it's putting three in that box, but the first three is banana. See what's happening? So it's switching. So we need to distinguish the meals from the fruits, or from the food items here, from the fruits, I just picked fruits before as an example. We need to distinguish which one's which, okay? Now, normally I'm all about using auto numbers and storing numbers as IDs. In this particular case, I'm gonna put either an M or an F in front of that ID. So we'll have M1, F1, M3, F3, M4, and so on, because it's only being used here and it's only being used to select a unique value for this combo box. And after that, we're not keeping it anymore. 
okay? And that's a perfectly valid way to indicate which one is which, and it gives them unique values. So let's go back to the union query. I hope you appreciated that I showed you the wrong way first and why that happened. Okay, and let's say meal ID is going to be M and meal ID, and the food ID is going to be F and the food ID. And now when I take a look at the values in here, I have unique rows, same. Okay, all the Fs are there, all the Ms are there, and now each one's got its own identifier. And if you want to be a purist, if you want, you can make, you can, you know, you can take this instead. You can add a, add a million to it, whatever you want to do. This is fine for me. I think this works perfectly fine. Okay. Plus we also need a way to distinguish what happens when we pick the value in the combo box, because when we add a food item, it's just going to add that one item using that add food item subroutine that we wrote before. If it's a meal item, now we've got to loop through all of those and add the food items from the meal. So we have to handle it differently too. And now we can just look at that letter and decide which one is which. Yeah, you could look at this description and find, you know, pick the ones that have the word meal in them. That's another way you could do it, but then you gotta make sure you never change that. This is a little more future-proofed here, okay? All right, so now save changes there. Now if you go back into here and you pick Rick's Coffee, it should stay Rick's Coffee because the value in there is M3 or whatever it was. And if I add it, Eh, nothing happens because we got to fix that part of the code now too. Add, add food item to log. All right, so now we've got past the combo box not working problem. Now this add food item to log is perfect just the way it is. I'm not going to mess with it. All right, if you look at it, right, it takes an ID and then it adds all. I mean, we're going to make some minor modifications, but basically this works just fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to add another subroutine first that's going to look at the item in the box. And it's going to say, are you a good witch or a bad witch? No, I'm just kidding. It's going to say, are you a meal or a food item? If you're a food item, I'm just going to send you right to add food item to log. If you're a meal item, now I've got to go to a different subroutine and loop through them and send each of those individual items to add food item to log. Works the same way. Okay, one just got to loop through the record set. So let's go back up to here, the add food button click, right? And instead of add food item to log here, let's just change this to add, oops, someone's beaming in. Uh, add to log. Okay, so we're gonna add to log food combo. Now, what's add to log? Well, we gotta write it. So let's come up here. All right, private, sub, or public, whatever you want. I don't think I'll be ever calling this from another form, but in case you decide to, that's okay too. All right, add to log. Now, this is weird, but it's going to take an ID as a string, and that's okay. You know, your ID can be whatever you want it to be. Usually, it's an auto number, but in this case, it's a string, okay? Now, I'm going to pull two bits of information out of that ID. I want the item type, whether it's an M or an F, right? And then I want the native ID, whatever that ID was for the either food item or whatever, right? So, dim uh, item type as a string, and this will be either an M or an F. And then we're going to dim uh, the native ID as a long, and that's going to be either the meal, I meal ID or the food ID. Okay, now it's easy to get. And this is one of those cases where we're building this ourselves. So there's no possibility of the user sending some weird stuff in there. We don't got to worry about them breaking it. So the item type is going to be the left of the ID comma one, that left one character. And then the native ID is everything else right? It's going to be the right of the ID comma the length of the ID minus one. So if it's, you know, if it's five characters, it's going to be five minus one, the right four characters. And then access should stuff that properly into a long, but I'm going to force it with a CLNG, convert to long. Okay. It should. Access is really good about automatic type conversions. You know, if something is in a string and you're trying to stuff it into a long, if it if it is numeric, you can use is numeric to test that. But again, this is a situation where we're providing it the data. The user doesn't have the ability to type this in, so I'm not too worried about it. And now we're going to say if item type is an F, then add food item to log that native ID. Right? That's a food item. 
Otherwise, it's a meal item. For now, we're just going to message box meal and if. Right? You could put in here food item, right? Food item. And you could put in here meal item. Okay? So, as of right now, food should still be working the same way it was before. And if they do pick a meal, it's going to say, oh, we got a meal. All right? That's all we've done so far. We haven't written the meal part of it yet. So, save this. Debug compile. I want to make sure. Whoops. Add to log. Oh, then I have to find. What did I do? <laughs> add to long. Wrong. <laughs> okay. See, that's why we debug compile once in a while. It catches stupid errors. All right. It catches the stupid errors. It doesn't catch the logic errors, which those are the, those are the ones you really pull your hair out on. Okay. Come back here. Close it. Open it. Add a food item. Still working. Works great. And protein bars. Okay, let's add a meal item. Meal, let's add uh, Rick's coffee. And we got a meal. All right, everything is working perfectly. Now we just need to write what happens if we do this. And guess what? We'll talk about that in tomorrow's video. So tune in tomorrow, same bad time, same bad channel. That's going to do it for part 42. That's your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. See you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.